Passive income from dividends is the holy grail of investing. It's like free money showing up in your account that you can use to pay bills or otherwise start living life the way you've always dreamed. So in this video, we'll explore two similar dividend ETFs that are currently extremely popular with investors, JEPI and XYLD, and dive into the numbers to see which one might be a better option for you. Both of these dividend ETFs pay out monthly, which is important, especially if you're trying to use this money to pay bills and live your life. Most stocks pay dividends on a quarterly basis, which is highly inconvenient if you need the funds immediately to pay bills. Both of these ETFs generate double-digit dividend payouts by selling covered calls. But there are a few key differences that we will explore further. These funds are typically best for people who are actively trying to live off of their dividend payments immediately with relatively little concern about future growth in the stock price itself. By selling covered calls, the fund has effectively put a cap on how quickly the stock price can rise. And by doing so, the long-term effect is that most funds remain relatively flat when it comes to individual share price. For this reason, these funds are particularly popular with people approaching retirement age as the high dividend payments can more adequately support an active lifestyle and there is less need for long-term capital appreciation. So let's get into the comparisons. Since JEPI is a relatively new fund released in mid-2020, there are relatively few data points to attempt to determine which fund produces the better long-term results. However, since JEPI's release in May of 2020, it has performed slightly better than XYLD, returning a total of 37% to nearly 29% for XYLD. When it comes to raw dividend payouts, XYLD does appear to have a slight advantage with the trailing 12-month dividend payout roughly 1.5% higher than that of JEPI. And this theme seems pretty consistent as XYLD has paid a higher dividend each year so far. In 2020, the payout was a full 3 percentage points higher, or in other terms, over a 40% higher dividend payout rate for that year. But when it comes to returns or dividend payouts, we need to contextualize everything and account for risk. To account for this risk, we will look at the fund's overall Sharpe ratio, and you can see that the funds tend to mirror each other relatively closely with a slight edge given to JEPI, which is currently producing better overall returns per unit of risk. When analyzing volatility, JEPI has a lower volatility rating, and is thus slightly more stable with its price movements. This might be surprising to many people considering the total number of assets held by each fund. Currently, JEPI holds a little over 100 companies in its portfolio, and XYLD holds over five times that many with over 500 companies. Usually when it comes to index funds, the more companies that are a part of the fund, the more stable the fund becomes. So you would think that with XYLD and its significantly larger total number of companies, it would have a clear advantage. However, when we look at the largest holdings in each fund, we see that JEPI has funds dispersed very evenly amongst its top 10 holdings. And these 10 stocks only account for 17% of the total fund. Meanwhile, XYLD, on the other hand, shows a clear bias towards the tech sector, with Apple and Microsoft making up nearly 13% of the total fund just between those two companies. Here, the top 10 companies make up an even larger share at 26.2% of the total fund. So while XYLD holds more total companies, it is relatively top-heavy with a handful of the companies making up the vast majority of the fund, meaning that companies number 300 through 500 make up such a trivial portion of the fund to effectively be useless. While Apple and Microsoft are probably relatively sound long-term bets, in the short term, Having significant exposure to these two stocks does give XYLD a higher volatility rating than the more balanced JEPI fund. However, JEPI is also unbalanced, but for different reasons. While XYLD has a strong exposure to technology, JEPI is the exact opposite, having virtually no exposure to the information technology sector, with 83% of its total positions being in equity and REIT positions. However, since the ELN options that JEPI trades are meant to mirror the S&P 500, which obviously has many tech companies, but since JEPI owns virtually no tech companies themselves, these ELNs more closely resemble a naked call than an actual covered call. 
These factors mean that Jeppy performs best under a bear market such as we are currently in. And during a bull market, Jeppy could experience a much higher volatility and an overall drag on its returns when compared to XYLD due to the nature of their ELNs. So if you believe this bear market will continue for several years, that heavily favors Jeppy. However, if the market begins to rebound, that would be more favorable to XYLD with its more traditional approach to executing covered calls. And lastly, we need to explore the fund's expense ratios. Further revenue is never guaranteed, but the one thing that is guaranteed is that fees still need to get paid. And these fees can have a significant long-term impact on your overall return. JEPI has an expense ratio of 0.35%, while XYLD has a higher expense ratio of 0.6%. This means that for every $10,000 you have in the fund, XYLD would charge $25 more in fees than had you invested that money in JEPI. And these fees can add up quickly over an investing life cycle as money begins to grow and compound. If you had invested $10,000 for 30 years, you might pay a total of $26,800 in fees with JEPI, but closer to $44,600 with XYLD. Given this, you can imagine the fees if instead you had invested $50,000, $100,000, or a million dollars or more invested in these funds. Overall, both funds are solid choices if you are looking for an ultra high-end dividend ETF. But let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment with which fund you prefer. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.